I'm going I'm to give you a couple things that could be helpful for you that have shown to be helpful for in general for people with leaky gut issues. But the truth is, if somebody gets on here in a video and says, take this supplement, it's going to heal your leaky gut, um, they're misleading you. It's not true. There's just no way. Hey, what's up, guys? Dr. Kyle Loveless here today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, leaky gut and more importantly, leaky gut and that it's not just a supplement you're gonna take that's gonna get rid of your leaky gut. I'm gonna talk about what causes it, why do you have it, and what can you actually do about getting rid of it, and it's gonna be more than a supplement. I'm gonna give you a couple things that could be helpful for you that have shown to be helpful for in general for people with leaky gut issues, but the truth is is you're not gonna buy, you know, if, if somebody gets on here in a video and says, take this supplement, it's gonna heal your leaky gut, um, they're misleading you. It's not true. There's just no way. There's certain things that can be helpful and healing, but there's more to it than that. This video today is going to walk you through that process because for some of you, your autoimmune issue, whether it's psoriasis or, or, eczema or other health uh, autoimmune issues, um, is coming from that gut issue. And that gut issue, it has to get uh, taken care of if you want it to go away and actually stay away. You might be able to get you know, your psoriasis or skin issue to go away for a short period of time, but it'll always shift back unless the gut is healed. And that takes time. That's not a supplement you can take to heal your gut. It'd be really cool if it was because I would sell that thing like crazy, but it's just not true, okay? And I'm not saying supplements are bad and they won't help, but they are not the only answer. They're a very small actually part of that answer. The true, uh, true, true reality is, is we have to find out, okay, what? first of all, let's look at what causes a leaky gut. Let's go into that, all right? So what causes the leaky gut? Now I'm gonna give you five things to specifically do about it. But what causes it? Number one, uh, well, all in all, stress causes the leaky gut, whether it's physical stress, whether it's chemical stress, whether it's emotional stress. Emotional stress puts your body into a fight or flight response. It pulls you out of the digestive mode, which creates uh, food, to, which allows food to just sit in the GI tract. It creates less production of, um, of um, acid in the stomach, less production of the mucosal lining in the gut lining. It causes the, the cell wall of your gut to actually leak open and gap open. And proteins get into the bloodstream and whether they're pathogenic proteins like bacteria and viruses and funguses um, or, or even parasites, or whether they're food um, or chemicals or mold or whatever else that might be that gets into your bloodstream, your body creates this immune response and over time, that immune response becomes overactive when it gets bad and it turns into an autoimmune issue, especially if you're someone with a what we call a genetic SNP to that autoimmune issue. So like with, with psoriasis, I've shot videos on this in the past, but there's a polymorphism to psoriasis, meaning you're susceptible to getting that psoriasis and leaky gut is the triggering aspect of it, okay? But what good does it do for you to know that you have a leaky gut if you can't fix it? Right. So those are the things that that's ultimately what causes the leaky gut. And it could be uh, chemicals in your environment. It could be medications that you've taken. It could be antibiotics that killed off the good bacteria. It could be eating gluten on a daily basis. It could be food allergies. It could be all of them. And the truth is, for most people, it's all those things bombarded in on the system. Uh, glyphosates, for instance, round up in our food system, which is very, very heavy in grain products, wheat, oat, um, really all grains get sprayed with this glyphosate before they're taken to dry them out, okay? And then we eat it and it destroys our, uh, and, you know, glyphosate essentially is an antibiotic. It's one of the world's strongest antibiotic. It kills our good bacteria in our gut. And we get a leaky gut. So how do you get rid of leaky gut? Number one, um, and, and I, I won't go too much on what leaky gut is. It's ultimately, and before I go in forward, I just, if you don't know, uh, leaky gut is where you have two, you have your cell wall around your gut lining, right? And let's just say they're really tight. They call them tight junctions. So this is two cells and there's tight junction and they only gap open when your body, when, when they sh they're supposed to only gap open when your body has things to get through, nutrients and minerals and immune factors and things like that to get through, they should gap open and get through. Um, just small enough for those. But what's happening is things like zonulin, which is released from eating gluten, our body releases that zonulin response and other things can cause this too. It causes the gut line to open because there's this immune response happening and then in return, proteins get into the bloodstream. Okay, that's ultimately what a leaky gut is. So how do you heal that? Well, that's a massive question because it's gonna be a little bit different for everybody. However, I'll give you the overview and so that you can deep dive into each individual one of these, okay? And the, um, you know, the psoriasis course that I put together, I deep dive into each one of these, but you got diet. So your diet absolutely plays a role. We use diet to reduce stress, right? And to maximize nutrients. So um, eating clean and eating healthy and eating a non-inflammatory diet um, that I put in the gut healing diet that I've, I've kind of created 
helps reduce stress on your GI tract to prevent or reduce the impact of, or the likelihood of getting a leaky gut. You can't heal a leaky gut if you still stress it out. In other words, if your stress levels, and that's the next thing I was gonna say, if your stress, emotional stress is high, maybe you're, um, you know, you're focused on the past and things that have happened in the past, maybe you're really anxious because you're worried about the future, maybe your, um, your, your biochemistry is off, and, um, and typically with a gut issue it is, and it creates a lot of emotional stress, right? Maybe you're just life circumstances, right? Expectations haven't been met and we become stressed, well, that, that, that affects our digestion. So the best recommendation I can have for that is not only just, not only to address the stress, yes, address that, find ways to handle it, find ways to become more resilient to it, but help your body out. When you eat, eat slower, right? Take your time and give your body a great opportunity to actually break down the food and put your body into a relaxed state while you're eating. Because if you're in a, a what's it called, a parasympathetic uh, I'm sorry, a sympathetic response. I mean, a fight or flight response, your nervous system is in the go mode. It's not trying to digest food. And when it does that, when that, when that's happening and you're eating, right, you're at work, you're working, you're, you're grabbing the food here, you're moving around, yelling at Joe over there, jumping on the phone here and you're eating and you're trying, your food's not being digested. I don't care if it's the healthiest meal on the planet, it's still not digesting very well because your body's not set to digest it. And I've talked about this before, but The Slow Down Diet, it's a great book. Not necessarily that you have to read it, um, but I'll give you the gist of it. And it's that if you sl just slow down and calm down and relax, listen to some classical music, uh, maybe turn the lights down a little, get out of the, get out of the blue screen, get out of the blue um, uh, lighting in your house and just go outside in the sun. If you can, eat and just breathe, relax. Get your body into a relaxed state. Do some four, seven, eight breathing, four seconds in, seven seconds hold, eight seconds out breathing techniques in that process. Think about the good things in life. Have some thankfulness while you're eating. I know these things sound corny and like a lot of work just to get food in, but it puts your body into a place where you can now break that food down and use it. And it reduces a mass amount of stress on your GI tract. It does that because your stomach acid's producing. That means it's breaking the protein down. It's breaking the carbohydrates down. Your pancreas is releasing elastase, which pancreatic elastase, which helps break your carbohydrates down. Your gallbladder, your liver, all that's producing the bile that it can get in there and emulsify those fats for you that you're eating. And give your body a chance to do its job in that relaxed state, okay? And that'll take stress off your GI tract, which is the very first step of healing the leaky gut. It's not a supplement. It's not even a specific diet plan. It's really just reducing stress on that GI tract. Now supplements, what supplements can you take? Because I know everybody loves that and I think there are some very effective ones. One I love actually for healing a leaky gut and helping the mucosal lining of your GI tract. You see our gut lining has a mucus layer, okay? And it protects us from acid and other things. But that mucus layer is very thin, but it's where a lot of the good bacteria, the probiotics are actually stored. Okay, that's where they live. It's also where our, our, uh, our immune factors in our gut live. And that mucosal lining can get broken down from stress and, and, and all the things I just talked about. You lose that mucosal lining. Certain meds like uh, ibuprofen and other meds actually are um, omniprozole and other meds actually cause you to lose that gut lining, which is what leads to ulcers. And so we, we lose that gut lining and there's nowhere to put the good bacteria. So how are we going to have a good microbiome that's essential for you know breaking food down and metabolism and other things? in an immune, immune system if we don't have somewhere for them to live. So the herb I recommend for that is actually chamomile. Chamomile will stimulate, it's actually a stimulant. If you think of chamomile as something that relaxes you, and it does have that impact because it helps GI tract, but chamomile is actually a stimulant. It stimulates your goblet cells, okay? The goblet cells produce the mucus, which is what that where all that good bacteria lives. So if you're someone like, hey, I'm taking probiotics. Well, if you're taking probiotics, it's kind of like, you know, what if you have a garden and it's full of weeds and we're like, all right, I'm going to plant some vegetables in that garden, but there's weeds everywhere. Well, the weeds aren't going to allow the garden to grow. So if you have a bad environment, the bacteria is not going to stay. So chamomile first and do that for about three to four months. You don't want to go any much longer than that because again, it's a stimulant. You don't want to continue it for too long, but chamomile is great. And then, and, I'm, and more than just chamomile tea, chamomile tea is good, but I would, I'd go more intense than that. Um, and, uh, and if you, again, if you want any of these supplements that I recommend, you can go to our full scripts account, go in the link below, it takes you to our page and you can get, get on there and you get 20% off of anything. Um, uh, with chamomile, I actually recommend standard process. Standard process is a great brand. So I like the liquid version of it. Uh, L-glutamine is another one, which you've heard of multiple different times. And that's just really good for healing the gut lining, given that it's a, an amino acid that helps make sure you have what you need. And then probiotics. Um, I don't love recommending probiotics across the board. However, um, I think it's worth trying. You know, if, if you're someone that has 
leaky gut issues or digestive problems in general, try probiotics. If you have skin issues, try probiotics um, and see if it makes it better or worse or if it increases bloating or not. If you feel more bloated or kind of negative side effects, it could be you have too much bacteria, which is possible as well. And so you can also try, instead of taking a probiotic, you could try eating more, um, uh, more kimchi, more sauerkraut, things like that can actually be very effective as well. And then the final thing isn't really a supplement, but it's just something amazing for stomach acid, which if you have a lower GI tract issue, there's a stomach acid issue typically. So um, taking apple cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon of that and water twice a day is, is great. The final thing I'll recommend for leaky gut um, as a big picture uh, thing is two different things to get tested to find out not only if you have this issue, but um, what else is happening in your GI tract to reduce stress. Because here's the thing, and see if you eat, like I just said, if you um, calm your stress levels, if you eat slower, if you take these supplements, but yet you have a bacterial infection or a parasite, right? If you have parasites um, and, and, and your GI tract is such a mess, well, we need to know that because we need to address that first, okay? So to heal a leaky gut, you gotta also take, you gotta take the stress off. If it's a bacterial infection, if it's yeast infection, if it's all these overgrowths, then we need to address it. Okay, um, and so testing is key. So a stool analysis is very, we, we use a GI mapping uh, test from um, Diagnostic Solutions, and we can get you connected with that if you'd like. You can go, we have a kind of a, a, a website that we have all of our testing on. You can get that, and then a food allergy test. I know a lot of you have done the food allergy testing. Some of you have gotten great results with it already, um, but that's, that's a process we do as well, and you can get that kit in the descriptions below too. And so again, I'm not just trying to get you to buy all these things. I actually don't even recommend doing a stool test until you've done the other things I just recommended, okay? So if you haven't worked on stress, if you haven't eaten slower, if you haven't changed your diet into a non-inflammatory diet um, and, and things like that, I wouldn't even go to the stool test yet because those are essential first. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Hey, if you want to really deep dive into this stuff, get the psoriasis course. The psoriasis course is amazing. I actually call it the Conquering Psoriasis Program because it really is. It's more of a program than just an educational system. Um, I'm connecting with people back and forth through there, and we're, we're seeing cool stuff happen. Um, so get that course. It's still up for sale. It's still up for you guys to get. And um, finally, if you want the blueprint to psoriasis, maybe you don't want to purchase something and you're not ready to deep dive into that yet, Get the blueprint for psoriasis. It's a five-day email course that's obviously a little bit lower level, but it is the beginning steps to do in, in that process. And you'll get some of you are going to get awesome changes just from that. That's free. You can get that in the links below as well. All right, guys, you have an awesome day, and we'll talk to you next time.